so excited to have on Soccer North, Amy Walsh, former international, represented Canada at the Olympics and World Cup, continues to bestow her pearls of wisdom of the game uh, in the media, footy prime. Check out that podcast. Amy, welcome to Soccer North. Thanks, Andy. Great to be here. All right, let's talk about um, the Canadian women getting set for this World Cup. So when you take a look at that gold medal winning performance and the players who are on that team, who do you feel since then has grown the most, has surprised you the most? I think if you want to underline really important players who are going to make an impact for this team and their performance is really key to this team having a successful World Cup, is you have to talk about Jessie Fleming. And you talk about her, her season with Chelsea, all of the accomplishments mm -hmm. that, that she sort of lived at this top class environment and team in the Women's Super League, what she's able to bring to the table immediately with her club form um, will, will just be so important to this team. And then you also a fellow midfielder and in Julia Grosso. I don't think she's talked about enough. You know, she with with Juve and what she's done there, her run of form, but also winning the best midfielder in um, in that league over in Italy. Um, I think the midfield is something that doesn't get discussed enough. It, the question is oftentimes where the goal is going to come from, and I'm sure that we will get to that. But the way that this midfield is going to tick along, the way that they're able to play on both sides of the ball, is going to be absolutely integral to how this team performs in Australia and New Zealand. Let's take a look at your starting 11. Now, this is based on absolutely everyone being healthy, little bit of a la-la land. And when you speak about your midfield, right, Quinn Grosso, and you have Jesse Fleming a little further up the pitch, why do you mm -hmm. like her in more of that creative 10 role? Well, I alluded to it a little bit before about how important that link-up play is going to be for Canada. And when you talk about Jesse Fleming and you talk about technical ability and the ball at her foot, there's nobody better um, to, to drive the play, to get that progressive play that Canada is really going to need going forward. Um, and whether, you know, we'll, we'll talk about the absence or the presence of Christine Sinclair and how she's best utilized and how Bev Priestman is going to have to juggle that. But Jesse Fleming being higher up the pitch, finding those pockets of space, um, creating space for others and finding those seams to slot in the likes of, uh, of a Jordan Heidema is going to be really key for Canada. Let's talk about Jordan Heidema because I have been so impressed by this player's growth. Uh, but now she has changed things up professionally, knowing that she has to get that playing time to the point where she seems to have impressed you quite a bit because she's starting for you at that number nine. What have you seen in her game that you've really liked? Well, first of all, I'll talk about the importance of an out-and-out -out number nine in Bev Priestman's starting 11. I think you need to be able to stretch the pitch. I think you really need somebody to stretch the opposition and to create space underneath. And what I've liked about Jordan Heidema is her ability to, especially with Jess Fishlock, um, have a partnership and a li and link up with the midfield so that she's able to create space for herself. And um, even in her run, she's so smart. And that's a part of her game, I think, that is really um, developed in leaps and bounds is, is the sophistication of the runs in the box. So even when she's not the one who's getting on the board, she's creating and, and pulling defenders out of spaces that her teammates are able to find. Let's talk about these two tournaments here because, you know, everyone keeps saying the World Cup is so much more different than the Olympics and you've competed in both. What is the major difference? The big difference is, you know, the, the Olympics are more, it's a diluted field, more condensed field. It's more like a sprint uh, compared to the World Cup deeper field. This is the first year where the women's tournament will move from 24 teams to 32 teams, but it's also the gap between the games. So it's four and five days between games versus a turnaround that's really quick of, of two days. And, and the difference in the mental game and, and the mental fortitude or maybe just the management of that. And I think it was Christine Sinclair not too long ago said that in winning that gold medal, um, to, to go through those games, that would have only put them at the quarterfinals of the World Cup. So that really puts it into perspective. It's just, it's a longer tournament, more games. It has to be a slow build, uh, you know, a cagey, more conservative start, but you want to get that momentum going quickly. Um, so yeah, a, a completely different tournament, more of a marathon versus a sprint if you're comparing World Cup to Olympics. All right, well, buckle up because we're in it for the whole marathon. Can't wait. Amy, appreciate you taking the time. Thanks, Sandy.